Hello everyone. Welcome to Dynamics Con. My name is Rachit Garg and I will be talking about understanding platform convergence features in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations and Power Platform. Before I begin, I would like to say a big thanks to Dynamics User Group for organizing this wonderful event. A big thanks to all the sponsors and to all the people who have voted for my session. I will make sure that we make the most out of this session. So uh, what we will cover in next 40 minutes is I will talk about what is platform convergence, why is it required, and uh, what is the core uh, objective of this, uh, these features. What are the tools we have which enable platform convergence? We will do a quick demo, and then we will talk about what's coming ahead and what are the existing references you can refer to to know more about these features. And remember to pop in your questions in the chat window because I will be available to answer these questions after the session. A quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Rachid Garg. I am currently working with PwC Australia as a senior manager, and I'm a Dynamics 365 and Power Platform enthusiast. I've been working in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, which was previously called as Dynamics AX uh, since year 2005, and have been through with this product throughout it, its evolution in the last 20 years. So it, a lot of people ask me why I am still with this product, and the only answer is that there is always something new and exciting happening in this field, and there is always something new to learn every day. Uh, I do blog uh, and I am available on LinkedIn and Twitter. So uh, feel free to connect me uh, with me on these handles. And I'm also a participant on few user groups, which I, we have mentioned here. And I'm an active speaker in uh, Power Platform Community and Dynamics user group as well. So feel free to reach out and check these channels uh, on various handles and connect with us in these user groups. So let's begin with understanding what is platform convergence, because this is a word you must be hearing a lot if you are in Dynamics 365 uh, world. So we will start with the basics here and try to understand where Dynamics 365 family of products fit in the Microsoft ecosystem, and then how, what are the offerings in Dynamics 365 business applications? So what you see on the left-hand side is the whole Microsoft Cloud, stack, which is powered by Microsoft Azure to give all the compute and infrastructure. And then there are the core components, which are the offerings which are used by partners, customers, ISVs to build the unique solutions for their customers. And Microsoft Dynamics 365 is a core component of Microsoft Cloud offering. So if we look deep into Microsoft Dynamics 365, it is basically a collection of multiple business applications which allows users and companies to perform their operational activities, as well as it allows customers to engage with the companies to whom they are dealing with. So we can see there are multiple business applications under Dynamics 365 product portfolio, and the list is growing. So we, each of these application has its own role and its own value when it comes to business utilization. So if we dig a bit more deep, peel another layer of Dynamics 365 apps, they are basically divided into two categories. Like I'm not going very deep, but on a high level, what we see is that the Dynamics 365 applications are either built as a model driven app. So when you talk about field service, customer service, project operations, intelligent order management, supply chain insights, all these Dynamics 365 apps are built on modeled as a model driven app and their data resides in Dataverse. Whereas when we talk about finance and operations apps, these are the apps which are also known as ERP apps, which are Dynamics 365 finance, supply chain management, human resources, I have marked it as star because it's coming back in finance and operations uh, portfolio and Dynamics 365 commerce. Now, the difference is the fundamental difference between these applications is that the model driven apps are using Dataverse to store all their data and they have all the, uh, all the capabilities provided by Dataverse. Whereas for finance and operations app, the data is stored in SQL Azure, which is in cloud, but it is not directly linked to Dataverse. So the capabilities which the platform of Dataverse provides is not natively available for finance and operations apps. So what is the benefit and challenge out of it? So the challenges it brings is that 
your data, which is created by multiple dynamics application is still in silos. The data of ERP application is not really connected with the data of your customer service application. And that brings a lot of challenges for organizations who are using multiple Dynamics 365 applications to do their business processes. So for example, your reporting can become complex. You might have to run reporting from multiple data sources and then consolidate the data. Your system administrators are required to configure security in different applications for the same user. So a user may have a role A in ERP application and an probably an equivalent role in a different application. It also impacts the user experience because for users, they want a smooth and seamless business process uh, execution. So if there are business processes which are spread across multiple applications, so a process starts in CE, goes to ERP, and then again goes to, let's say, a customer portal, then the user is hopping multiple applications to perform a process. So and it also reduces your operational efficiency. So these are the challenges which we can see are faced by the customers when they are using the Dynamics 365 applications, ERP and CRM applications in the past. But then Microsoft is working on platform convergence, which is bringing all these benefits. So if we can bring the data UI together closer to each other, then how we can benefit the end user or the customer. So basically, if we have a unified data, we can leverage things like AI, ML, and all the Dataverse capabilities to run some uh, analysis on that data and make drive, and derive some actionable insights. Also, if we can unify the user interface, then users don't have to jump from one application to another to perform an, uh, a business process. They can do everything in one application. And also, it will improve your data quality. You will get real-time reporting. And if your system administration and monitoring can be unified, then it takes a lot of load off the system administrators of your IT department. So the whole idea of platform convergence is based around unifying these applications. So if I quickly jump back, you see there are ERP applications, CRM applications having different databases. But if we can unify the data and UI, we are achieving platform convergence. And there is more to it. Because Dataverse is very powerful platform, it's not just storing your data. People call it data as a service. They also call Dataverse as database plus plus. So, and all the, the reason is it's quite powerful. And as we can see on this slide, which I picked from one of the very nice blog, is that Dataverse has capability to talk to all the power platform frameworks. It can also talk to Azure Cognitive Services to run your analytics and derive actionable insights. It can also talk to multiple storage options. So depending on the type of data you want to store, you can store it at the right location. And you can also use Dataverse to ingest data directly in Data Factory. Recently, Microsoft released uh, Azure Synapse link for Dataverse, which customers are using to extract data directly from Dataverse. So just imagine the possibilities if your ERP data is visible in Dataverse, you can achieve a lot of uh, good things for your customers. Uh, the next slide is where we are uh, trying to highlight all the platform convergence capabilities on which Microsoft is working. And this is one of the key slides as a takeaway from this session. So we can see that the Power Platform, and then we are bringing all the ERP applications closer to it. So all the platform convergence tools are like gluing your uh, ERP applications with Power Platform. And in order to unify, there are four uh, segments. We can see data and events, where we are trying to unify data and events using these uh, frameworks like dual write, virtual entity, common data model. Then Microsoft is working on unifying the security and authorization. So if you are creating a user in finance and operation, it automatically creates in CE or vice versa. So these things are in the roadmap. How to unify the storage, how to bring ERP data in Dataverse, and how to store documents, how to store unstructured data using Dataverse capabilities to bring a unified experience. How can we converge the administration of multiple applications from a single landing page? And that's where uh, Microsoft is working on to converge LCS and Power Platform Admin Center. 
So that is a thing which Microsoft is working on. It will be released in future, but Power Platform Admin Center is going to be your key dashboard to manage all your Dynamics applications. So if you are from finance and operations background and you have never heard about Power Platform Admin Center, then start reading about it. And then the last is how can you convert the developer's experience, the extensibility experience? Because at the moment in finance and operations, you have to write extensions in X++ code. For CE, you have to write your own extensions in JavaScript using plugins. So how can we enable a unified developer experience? So Microsoft is working towards releasing more tools to convert these capabilities. There are a few things which have already been released. There are a few things which will be released in future. So keep a sharp eye on what Microsoft is doing in this space. One thing I would like to mention, this is a journey. It's not that in one wave, Microsoft will re release all the features. It's a journey. Dual right has been in the market for last two years. It has been evolving. So it's good to start following these uh, concepts and new capabilities which are coming out. So how the whole ecosystem will look like once all this collaboration happens is here, which Microsoft is talking about in Ignite recently, that the whole collaborative applications is about to become a reality. Business users will not care about which is the source, you know, which is the source system to store the master data. Your data will be seamlessly available across multiple applications. And you will also get capabilities where you can do some tasks in Teams. So um, you can do some approvals in Teams, or you can view your customer data in Teams, which is coming from different Dynamics applications. So there is a whole idea of building collaborative applications on which Microsoft is working. And that's why all these platform convergence tools were created. So I took it a bit slow, but my, uh, I, my objective was to make sure that we understand why this is needed and uh, what, what we are trying to achieve with this whole platform convergence. So now I will talk about what are the tools which enable this platform convergence. So as I mentioned, the platform convergence can be categorized into different segments. So here, if you talk about unifying data, the tools which are available nowadays are dual right, virtual entities, and data integrators. I'm sure in FNO space or even CE space, uh, people might have heard about these tools. To unify the UI, we can embed model driven apps and canvas apps in finance and operation through personalization. And we can also embed finance and operation pages in Teams or other UCI apps. So there is a UI unification capability which users can do by themselves. And also there is a way where we can hardwire these power apps or model driven apps in your finance and operations page. I'm not sure if it is available for model driven apps, but definitely for Canvas apps. In order to unify events, uh, Microsoft introduced business events. And recently they have also introduced data events. So these business events and data events will be available in Dataverse and we can consume it and then build your business process. For administration, there are two tools at the moment, LCS and Power Platform Admin Center. LCS is where you manage your finance and operations environment. And Power Platform Admin Center is where you manage your uh, Dynamics 365 uh, model-driven apps like intelligent order management or customer service or customer engagement. So let's talk a bit about all of these. Uh, so data convergence for data is, I'm not going very deep in each of these segments because there are, uh, there are uh, multiple sources we can learn about these, but the whole, uh, in a nutshell, data, dual write provides you a tightly coupled bi-directional near real-time integration. So if you create a data in CE or Dataverse, it gets created in finance and operations. It, if you create in finance and operation, it gets created in CE. It's real time, it's bi-directional. And that means uh, we have to use it with care. Like it's good to use it for master entities and not for really uh, like transactional data entities. And the second option is virtual entities where your data is in finance and operation is exposed to uh, data words through virtual entities, which means the difference is your data is not copied into data world. Your data is still resides in finance and operation. You just expose it at Dataverse to read, uh, create, update, and delete. So you can still do CRUD operations on data exposed as virtual entities, uh, but the difference is it's not copied in Dataverse. The third type of uh, framework is data integrator, where you can build point-to-point -point asynchronous integration 
It's basically defining your mappings between your dataverse tables and finance and operation data entities, and then set up a recurrence, and then it starts moving data from the source to target system. Now, these three capabilities can exist side by side in an implementation. It's not that you only have to pick one. So for example, here we have shown that there can be a scenario where your customer data is uh, connected through dual write. However, your sales order and order lines and items are exposed as a virtual table. And you can consume all of this in a model driven app or a Canvas app to build your user experience. We'll do a quick, uh, quick dive in uh, dual write. As we can see that here, it's a tightly coupled bi-directional integration and it follows the low code, no code principle. And it also allows you online and offline mode. So the reason I'm talking about dual right here is it's, it has been in market for last two years and it has gone through an evolution. So when it was released and the way it is today, uh, it has matured a lot. And Microsoft is improving this framework based on the feedback from customers and partners and architects. So what I want to say is that give your feedback to Microsoft if you are facing any scenarios where dual right is not able to handle the, the, the process, engage with Microsoft and try to understand is dual right even the right candidate to solve that scenario. Uh, dual right is not the solution for everything, but we need to really understand the, the data structures and the process flows, what we are trying to achieve when we talk about dual right. I have uh, shared some links here. And the reason is that these links will tell you how the dual right framework has evolved over time and what new functionalities have been introduced. Like for example, global address book uh, solution has been released to make it more smooth to uh, integrate your uh, gap between finance and operations and dataverse. One thing we also have noticed that in dual right, the way we used to configure dual right in past versus the way we configure dual right now has changed. When dual right was introduced in 2020, it was a five step manual process to install your solutions in Dataverse, set up your authorization, set up your application IDs and enable your entity maps. Now it has become a one click experience using lifecycle services portal. When we deploy an environment, we can actually connect finance and operations and Dataverse just by doing few clicks from LCS. So this, has, this is all about the experience which customers shared with Microsoft and then the Microsoft is improving these experiences. So in order to initialize dual right and virtual entity, we can do it through LCS today without doing all these setups manually. We only have to now enable the maps and enable the virtual entities in the dataverse. Similarly, for uh, if you talk about virtual entities, the benefit of virtual entity is that it doesn't copy data and it allows you to expose finance and operations data via virtual entities. It allows current operations and you can also invoke some business processes using OData action. Now, some examples are mentioned here that for a customer engagement user, you can view your customer information, you can view your inventory or product information, and you can also maintain your assets. So if you are working on a lightweight uh, user power app where you can consume data from virtual entity. It's a, these are good scenarios to be, uh, to be taken care of by virtual entities. Even in finance and operations, there are requirements where customers want a simple clean UI to enter the key information and let the automation happen behind the scene. In those scenarios also, we can use virtual entities and having the data available in Dataverse via virtual entities also gives you power to use power automate flows. The third thing is around data integrator, uh, where we are talking about how the data integrator projects are created and what are the various scenarios. So if you see a data integrator project consists of mappings, connection sets, projects, and templates. Yes, there are out of the box templates from Microsoft. For example, we see here prospect to cache integration templates and solutions are available, which architects can start using as a, a baseline and then work on their solution on top of it. So the benefit it gives is that you can move your data from Dataverse to uh, finance and operations asynchronously. So if this, this is good for high volume scenarios. We'll quickly talk about the UI convergence where we, how we can enable the UI convergence is you can embed power apps in finance and operations at multiple places. You can embed on workspaces, list pages, dashboards, 
You can embed can Canvas apps in works as a workspace, and you can also embed finance and operations in Teams. So here I am on finance and operations dashboard in which dual right is enabled. So if you have to see what dual right capabilities are enabled, we can go to data management workspace. We can go back to dual right. Here we can see how dual right is linked to which environment of data words. So it basically loads all your maps which are available and it also tells which environment it, it is linked to. What we can do is we can filter on the maps which are currently active and we can see which maps are currently enabled for dual right integration. Let's take as an example, customer V3 contact map here. So what you see when you go down under the dual right map is which table in finance and operations is linked to which table in data work. So here you can see customers V3 data entity is mapped with contact. You see a small filter icon here. Here we can see and define our filter rules. So which data from finance and operation goes to CE? Here it's defined that a party type person, only those records will be synchronized. So if you have your specific requirement where you want to filter out the data, you can use this query. Similarly, from the data work side, we can define the query criteria that which records will be created or synchronized between FNO and CE. Then when you look at the column level, there are different type of uh, uh, symbols you see here. So for example, the sellable field, if you see this is only one way and there is a transformation applied here. So transformation can be applied. So if you have value ABC here and one to three in uh, data words, you can apply transformation. Some fields are not mapped. So in this one we see, okay, for gender code, there is a transformation. So in finance and operation, it's male and in data verse, it's one. In finance and operations, it's female and data verse, it's two. So we can define our own transformations. We can define which fields are not mapped and not available between two entities. And we can also define which fields are mapped as it is. So it's very important to understand the data structures for the maps where you are enabling these experiences. Just a quick demo, what we have, what I have done is I have created a, a model driven app where uh, we can create assets, manufacturer and their models. So what I'm bringing here is a, a simple model driven app, which is created by the dual right uh, entity, which is exposed through finance and operations. And what I will do is I will create, okay, I have got, uh, so here I will see the company. Uh, here I will see all the finance and operations company. So this is good because it's squaring your dual right framework and trying to bring your data from finance and operations. So it brought the lookup and in the manufacturer, let's put uh, getting something from Caterpillar and then I click on save here. So while it is saving, it is actually committing the transaction back in finance and operations. So if I open my finance and operations, at the moment, you will see that there is no Hitachi here. Uh, there is no Caterpillar, it's only Hitachi here. But while it is saving, once it saves, we will refresh the record there and see that uh, the record has been saved. So now it is saved. If I go back to finance and operations and I refresh this page, you can see, I can see Caterpillar here. Now we go ahead and create some, <coughs> sorry, create some models in it. So let's say I'm creating a, a new model provided by that particular manufacturer to me. So I can select my USM app. So here, what I've done is it's just like a bit raw uh, model driven app, uh, but if you create it in real time, it will be uh, more uh, user intuitive in terms of UI. So if I save and close, I can see that I have created a related record and I can basically add one more and I can say, okay, I have uh, another thing and manufacturer is Caterpillar. Uh, another model of dozer. Um, just save and close. So now what we have done is we have created related records using a model driven app in ERP outside of uh, from a model driven app. So if I go back and I refresh, so you see your data was created through a model driven app outside ERP and it is available here and users can even change it from here. So this is an example where your data has been unified between two applications and your user experience can be built outside finance and operations. Now quickly, I will show you one more thing is how we can embed power apps and how we can embed model driven apps. 
So what happens is each model driven app has a web address. So I have copied the web URL of this model driven app. And what I can actually do is in my finance and operations dashboard, let me just quickly go to dashboard. I will just right click. And this is the personalization feature, which I'm talking about. So we can click on add a page, add a website, and let's say create manufacturer is the name I want to give. And I just paste the URL. Now, when I save it and reload my default dashboard, I can see a type create manufacturer. If I click it on it, I can actually work on that app within finance and operations. I'm not leaving or changing my browser or logging onto a particular module or navigating to a particular step. I can just access that screen on a click of a button. This is one way we can embed model driven apps in finance and operations. There is one more way where we can embed a power apps. So each power app has a unique grid, which can be seen from the properties. So the way to embed a power app is basically let's open any form. So if I'm on a vendor form here, and we can also uh, hardwire these power apps uh, by using uh, X++ development. So we have form controls available where we can embed. So we can click on power app, add an app, and I can give an app ID here. And I say my app. Uh, system and I can say if it opens in thin or white. So let's say if I have a power app which has been released by IT and I want to embed it because I use it a lot, I can just add it and I can see here that okay, I have a power app which can help me to log in a support ticket for my company. I can say okay, I'm having uh, unable to view uh, reports or something like that, and I can just uh, give some description and I can create. So basically, it allows me to access power apps which have been released by my uh, organization to directly access from finance and operations without going into multiple screens. So this was one of the thing I wanted to show here. Um, just being mindful of time. So I'll just move and talk about business events and convergence. Again, business events was introduced a couple of years back. It's not a new concept, but it has evolved. And the way it has evolved is previously we used to consume business events from finance and operations using finance and operations connector in Power Platform. But now Microsoft is working on consuming these events using Dataverse connector. So there is a new connector available for Dataverse, which is in preview mode, where you can actually see all your Dynamics 365 applications as catalog and their modules are again then category. So this is how your consumption of business events across multiple Dynamics applications will be unified using the new Dataverse business uh, Dataverse connector for Power Apps. So Microsoft has released a Power Platform uh, tool adding for Visual Studio where we can consume business events in Dataverse using uh, this additional plugin. So what we can do is any business application is sending the business event to Dataverse can be consumed using this add-in and we can write a C-sharp plugin on top of that and we can update data back using virtual entities. So this enables seamless opportunities for us to write and extend the processes outside of finance and operations. So this is where your developer experience will get converged going forward. I have shared the link where we can read more about it. A quick glimpse on how we can use other Power Platform tools once your data is available in Dataverse. So there are use cases where we can use AI Builder and Microsoft has released these prediction models of cash flow forecast, budgeting forecast, customer payment forecast based on these microservices, which is, feed, which is feeding data to uh, Dataverse. And then we can also use it for forms processing where we can have AP invoice automation, expense receipt processing. These are actually um, the expense receipt processing is uh, add-in you can install. And all these AI builder capabilities can be leveraged once you have data in Dataverse. So this is how the story ties back. Once you have data in Dataverse, you have the whole power of Power Platform available to you. Similarly, virtual agents, you can build your chatbot experiences for your customers or end users. And there are uh, things which are available where you can create a chatbot on your vendor portal where your vendors can query about, your, uh, about their purchase orders. All your customers can log into a portal and they can interact with a chatbot to identify their credit limit or to check on uh, their order statuses or to do a return. So these type of scenarios can be enabled through Power Virtual Agent. Again, the key is exposing the business events, data entities to Dataverse 
and then taking creating a journey for your users on top of that. Uh, there are new things coming ahead. So what I have listed here is based on my research from online attending webinars and reading on docs. But basically, Microsoft is working on enabling one developer experience where you don't need a different development environment for CE and for FNO. All the capabilities can be will get converged and you will get an, a seamless development experience. PCF controls, which is one of the big reasons we, we, would, we use Power Apps nowadays, is uh, that we have scenarios where we need PCF controls in Power Apps and then we are linking Power Apps with finance and operations through UI. But going forward, we are hoping that PCF controls will also get enabled in finance and operations. Apologies for the typo here. And the convergence of uh, system administration tools like merging LCS and Power Platform Admin Center. And this is a big thing uh, on which Microsoft is working. And once it becomes CA, it will be a big thing for all the community as well. So start reading and learning about Power Platform Admin Center. Uh, going forward, your LCS may get merged in Power Platform Admin Center but please check with Microsoft on the timelines. And the depreciation of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Connector is uh, what I have read that is on the list. Uh, so uh, try to build your new Power Automates or your scenarios, either using a Dataverse a connector or using an HTTP connector so that you are not dependent on any depreciations because once these things depreciate, you might have to do some rework. So this is about what's coming ahead. Uh, it's a journey. Uh, so feel free to connect with Microsoft. Um, I will share those links. Just a few references before we wrap up, uh, that there are some nice references available on what has been done so far. So there is a Microsoft Fast Track Tech Talk, which was delivered by Jared Hall, Sudhakar Reddy, and Rahul Agrawal recently, which talks about these convergence capabilities, and they have done the demo on the Power Platform Visual Studio add-in. There is a community program for adoption by Microsoft, which is called as Dynamics Insider Program on Yammer. So this is a program where you can connect directly with Microsoft, discuss your questions, queries, scenarios, and there are some preview programs where you can participate and get your hands on to these tools. Uh, as Dynamics User Group uh, is doing all these sessions, there are other user groups who are doing these sessions. So one of the user group where I'm part of, we did a series of session on platform convergence where we actually did a deep dive on all of these topics. So this was a recording of five sessions. It is available on our YouTube channel. I'll just show how it looks, but I have shared the link here. And there is a great content by Microsoft Fast Track team where they have done tech talks on how we can use Power Platform to extend finance and operation capabilities. It's a deep dive series of almost 12 sessions, and each of these sessions is focused on use cases on how we can use virtual agents or mixed reality in the RMX 365. So these things will help you to understand and get in line with what has happened till now. As I mentioned, it's a journey. A lot of things have been done, a lot of things are happening, and a lot of things will happen. So gear up and be a part of this journey. I'll just quickly show you some uh, links which I was talking about. So if you look here, uh, this is the Tech Talk series of uh, Microsoft Fast Track team where you can go to recordings and download PPTs. Uh, this is our YouTube channel of Dynamics 365 User Group India where all the sessions are recorded. Uh, this is the Fast Track uh, session which was delivered recently in January uh, by Jared Hall and there is a presentation available for this. Uh, there is, uh, these are the links where you can uh, where the Microsoft has very nicely detailed out how you can actually download uh, and install this extension in your Visual Studio, log in, set it up, and start consuming your business events. So all your business event catalog can get uh, exposed in Visual Studio. How you can use Dataverse Connector for finance and operations, how you can embed Power Apps. So these are the links which I have shared in my presentation. Uh, but I, it's just uh, just to show here that um, these all this information is available. It's sometimes overwhelming to see how much information is available, but if it's uh, consolidated in one place, then it, it makes it uh, helpful. So here you can see how dual write has evolved over time, which bugs have been fixed, which new solutions were released and when. So have a read of these, these pages. It's really nice to see how this journey is happening in Microsoft and how we can leverage it in, um, in our experience and make the life of our customers easy. So uh, 
I'll hang around after the session. But yeah, I really thank everyone for listening to me. I hope there are few key takeaways from this session, which will help you to do your job and to uh, think about what is happening in platform convergence. And uh, once again, I would really like to thank all the sponsors, all the people who voted for the session and a big thanks to the Dynamics user group for organizing this wonderful event where all the people are collaborating and connecting with each other, learning with each other and making each other's life easy. Thank you guys. session and all the feedback you have shared on the chat window. I'm looking a bit weird because it's almost 3 a.m. at my end, but I wanted to join this live Q&A to make sure that uh, we answer any questions. And also, it's a, a great opportunity to network with Dynamics people. So uh, yeah, I uh, just want to mention that uh, uh, that this uh, da these Dataverse uh, dual right virtual entities and data integrated, they can coexist in an implementation. So you, it's not like that you have to pick only one thing. And uh, the Power Platform Admin Center is really going to be uh, some add a lot of value in future. So keep an eye and start learning Power Platform Admin Center if you are from finance and operations background. Uh, that is definitely going to be a key uh, key platform and key tool in your implementations in future. Uh, just few questions. Taking one question from Santosh is that would virtual entity deliver the performance needed to have good experience in Power Apps? Uh, maybe Canvas and model driven apps. So Santosh, based on my experience, uh, virtual entities, they do give good experience, uh, but they're not suited for high volume scenarios. So if you're building uh, experiences for your customers where the data which is being queried from finance and operation is not big, then yes, definitely virtual entities are a good fit for this scenario. Uh, the virtual entities are different to uh, dual right and data integrator. So depending on the scenario, you have to decide if virtual entities are a good fit for your uh, process and your particular solution or not. But uh, there can be few situations where you might face performance issues uh, and there are ways to query and model uh, to, you know, to model your queries to have more targeted uh, query plan going back to Dynamics. So make sure that when you call uh, data and then you are filtering out before showing it on the app, how you can optimize these things uh, that can improve these bottlenecks. But yes, uh, we have seen scenarios in real time where uh, virtual entities are used uh, using Power Apps and uh, the companies are using it. So I hope that answers your question uh yeah there are uh okay i can see what is the use case for data integrator uh so use case is again there are there are many use cases available if you will watch the tech talks links which i have shared you can see real time case studies but based on my experience we have seen scenarios where we need to move uh, for example uh, at the end of the day we need to move all the sales order information from ce to finance and operations so instead of having it as a dual right, if you are having a lot of operational activities and uh, dual right can create a lot of chattiness between two databases, in, in those scenarios, uh, we went to data integrator and created a asynchronous data push from one source to the destination. So there are a lot of use cases. Uh, it's mainly for high volume things. So if you have transactional data, which can be synchronized outside of SRs, you can use data integrator to synchronize that data. Cool. There's a question from Jason. Did you see any important updates in the newest release wave plan for convergence? Uh, yes. So uh, as I mentioned that convergence is a journey. It Not all the features will be released in one wave or in one year. There, it, there are frameworks which were released almost two years back and they're still evolving. So yes, I think uh, I'm not, uh, it's not on the top of my head which exact features are going to be released in this next wave. Uh, but I think there is a lot of focus on converging the business event and data events uh, using the Dataverse uh, business event uh, catalogs. I think that is one of the area where a lot of focus is going on. 
there is a question from Nurlin. Uh, does data event respect the delivery of events in the correct order? If I do update one, update two, is it guaranteed to come out in correct order? I'm not sure about the guarantee about on this thing. It basically depends on how you are sending your data events outside Dynamics. So there are ways where you can actually, uh, instead of sending them as real time, you can run it, them as a batch process. So uh, I would not use data events if there is a hard dependency on the sequencing of your uh, payloads, which are going out in Dynamics. And I understand there are scenarios where you want to make sure that your second payload is going only after first payload has been delivered to your uh, middleware or to your uh, target system. In those type of scenarios, I would say these sequencing should be taken care by the integration middleware and not by Dynamics. So uh, it depends on the scenario which you are trying to achieve, but I would not blindly use data events to sequence my uh, outgoing payload uh, activity. I hope that answers. Uh, there are fields like created date time, modified date time, which you can extract from the payload in the middleware and then send it out to the target system so that your sequencing is correct. Or you can have your own custom uh, fields to identify in which sequence the data needs to be sent. But uh, based on my experience, I might be wrong, but I would not use data events uh, and go with this assumption. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. So I don't see more questions in the Q&A chat window, but I really uh, am enjoying this Dynamics Con event. Thanks a lot to all the sponsors and Dynamics Con team for all the hard work they have put in to bring this event to live. And today we all are here. It has been a, a journey from session submission to vote appeal and then session preparation. And now the finally the day has come. So really excited. And uh, I am looking forward to the next Dynamics Con event very soon. And I wish everyone a great day.